Only about 6% of the business right now is digital. So I want to talk about the opportunity for NFTs. But then there's a huge part of the business. We were talking, I don't know if you saw us in the last hour, uh, we're talking about Bazooka Gum uh, and, you know, and Bazooka Joe. That's 35% of the business, all of, all, all of the, the candy that you can get uh, in front of these stores right now. How do you see that, that, that shifting over time, that mix? Well, we have two businesses. We have the confection business, which started with Bazooka, but now is, you know, much greater than that. And I think we're the largest candy company at the front of Walmart or Target. And our sports and entertainment business is just booming. When I, you know, I, I bought the company because I thought it had a great consumer emotional appeal, the way Disney did when I went to Disney with, you know, I went to the parks, I grew up, I took my kids to the parks. Everybody I talked to had remembered their Tops uh, cards, their mother threw away the cards that were under their bed in a box, their brother put it in the wheels of their tire. There was this emotional uh, feeling, so that's why I bought it. We bought it as an analog company with the goal of making it digital. And over the course of the 14 years we've owned it, we're now about 25% digital. However, the digital is growing really fast. It's instant uh, uh, gratification. Instantly, we upgrade on every turn of the bats and the statistics. And now with blockchain, we're going to be able to participate in the secondary market before we only participated when we put the analog cards out. Now, the cards, the play, as you said, the, uh, the cardboard cards are still extremely popular. We appeal to kids. The digital cards are very popular. We appeal to teenagers and young adults. And blockchain, you know, we think it will appeal to everybody. But what we did, when we decided to do this deal, we blockchain had not exploded. We've been playing in the field of blockchain for the last year and a half. But the explosion came after we made this decision. We did not make the decision for that reason. And it is not really in our economics, although we think it will be fantastic. So we don't have future uh, licenses in our projections. We don't have blockchain in our projections. We're running the company as a real company. And this is the icing on the cake, going digital completely with the analog still in place. You know, we have strong earnings. We have a great management team. I think uh, we have a similar management team that I had at Disney. And if you look around, so many of the companies are run by Disney alumni. And I will say uh, that uh, we're very happy to have Jason because now we have a real serious financial executive who helps us in all the various things we need help with. Michael, did you speak oh, by to the way, the, uh, a I, little... Go ahead. I should, I should... The company today, which is just ironic to me, is exactly the same financial position that Disney was in 1984 when I went there, to the dollar. Now, if we do a tenth as well as Disney, I will be very happy. Just speak to two issues. On, on this NFT business, does that... I mean, we talk about that as opportunity... Uh, do you also look at potential competition coming into the marketplace to, to compete with you in ways that, that they hadn't been able to before? Well, there's always competition. But we have the relationship with, for instance, Major League Baseball or the Bundesliga in Germany or with UEFA, the Champions League, all through Europe. We're growing internationally tremendously. And I think the consumer wants to see the players in their uniform of their exact team, they want to see the marks of, like, MLB marks. And if you put out an individual uh, player without all of that, it doesn't have the veracity of a Topps uh, company. So I don't think the uh, competition is going to hurt us. It probably will only help us. Uh, Jason, there's a real quick, there's a page on the deck about just the explosion uh, of your, you call it an edible business, which raised a question to me. About and, and maybe the maybe the brand is too wholesome. I don't know uh, about where that where that business could ultimately go. You're talking about the confections business. <laughs> that that's uh, it, it. It was referred to as the edibles business uh, in the deck. So I, I it, it oh. raised the question <laughs> yeah. about whether the yeah. confections business could could turn into an edibles business. Well, it's not I not think, those kind of edibles. <laughs> but yeah, you know, look, it is 35. Too. It, it, it is 35 percent of the business and provides a very steady stream of cash flow, which is which will be great for this business going forward. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC.
on YouTube.